bird strikes. Picture this, a bird is soaring majestically through the sky, minding its own business, and BAM! It collides headfirst with a 90-ton jet moving 500 miles per hour. Spoiler alert, the bird never wins. Bird strikes, also known as bird ingestion, which sounds way too much like an extreme cooking show, happens 13,000 times a year in the US alone. While most incidents don't send planes spiraling into fiery doom, they do cost the aviation industry a mind-blowing $1.2 billion annually. That's a lot of money to clean up what is essentially high-speed roadkill. The top offenders? Geese, vultures, and gulls. Basically the avian equivalent of reckless pedestrians. In one particular insane case, a plane over Ivory Coast hit a repels vulture at 37,000 feet, which is higher than Mount Everest. The bird was so high up, it was practically an astronaut training. Most strikes happen during takeoff or landing, which makes sense. Birds aren't exactly hanging out in the stratosphere plotting tactical air raids. But when they do hit, the result can be catastrophic. Just ask US Airways Flight 1549, whose engines were shredded by a flock of geese, leading to the legendary miracle on the Hudson. And if you thought birds were the only issue, guess again. Deer, coyotes, and even rabbits have been involved in aircraft incidents. Yes, rabbits. Because apparently nature is very determined to get in aviation's way. So next time you're on a flight, remember, the biggest threat might not be turbulence, it might just be a goose with bad timing. Engine failure. So, what happens when an airplane engine fails? Do we just drop out of the sky like a Looney Tunes anvil? No, but it does get a little spicy. First, let's get this straight. Airplanes don't need all their engines to stay in the air. In fact, they're designed to fly on just one. That's why if a twin engine plane loses one, the pilot doesn't just scream and eject. No, they compensate. They use their rudder, that fin on the tail, to counteract the uneven thrust, like a sailor steering against the wind. But hold on, what about the passengers? Would they notice? Oh, absolutely. The engine failure might sound like a whoosh followed by an unsettling silence. Like when your refrigerator stops humming and you suddenly feel like something's wrong. The plane will also start to pull in one direction, forcing the pilot to work those controls like a DJ scratching vinyl just to keep things straight. Now, if you're in a two-engine aircraft, this is an emergency, meaning the pilot is definitely looking for the nearest airport. If it's a four-engine plane, meh, they might just keep going if things seem fine. It's like losing one tire on an 18-wheeler. You're still rolling, but you really don't want to lose another. And let's talk about cost. Flying on one engine burns way more fuel. Airlines hate it. It's like driving on one flat tire. Sure you can, but your gas mileage is trash. So next time you hear a pop on your flight and feel a tilt, just remember, it's probably fine. Probably. Lightning strikes. All right, buckle up. Ever wondered what happens when lightning decides to high-five your plane at 30,000 feet? Well, spoiler alert. It's not as dramatic as Hollywood makes it seem. No fiery explosions, no engines bursting into flames, and definitely no emergency crash landings. In reality, modern airplanes are basically flying metal superheroes. Lightning-proof, shock-absorbing, and built to take a hit. Here's the fun fact. Your plane is likely to get struck by lightning at least once or twice a year. Yep, your innocent-looking aircraft might actually be out there causing lightning strikes by messing with electrical fields. It's like that one friend who just has to poke the bear. But don't worry. The charge enters the plane at one end, exits at another, and you barely feel a thing, except maybe a loud bang that makes you reconsider your life choices for a second. Why no damage? Because airplanes are basically giant Faraday cages. Fancy science talk for a metal bubble that keeps electricity out. The plane's body, made of aluminum and copper, makes sure that lightning passes through without frying the passengers inside. So no, your hair won't stand up like a mad scientist experiment mid-flight. The real problem? Lightning at airports. Ground staff aren't inside Faraday cages, so when a storm rolls in, they're pulled off the tarmac to avoid turning into human lightning rods. That means delays, cancelled flights, and your vacation plans thrown into chaos. So next time you're on a flight and hear a loud boom, just remember, your plane is an electricity-bending beast, and you're inside the safest metal tube possible. Now, enjoy your complimentary peanuts and turbulence. Extreme Turbulence all right, let's talk about turbulence, aka that heart-dropping moment when your plane suddenly feels like it's auditioning for an extreme roller coaster. Recently, a flight from London to Singapore got hit hard by turbulence that it sent people and objects flying. One person sadly lost their life, and the plane had to make an emergency landing in Bangkok. Yikes. So what is turbulence? Imagine Mother Nature sneaking up behind your plane and giving it a good shake, sometimes gently, sometimes like she's trying to spill your coffee on purpose. Turbulence usually happens in clouds where air currents are throwing a wild party, but the real troublemaker is clear air turbulence. That's when it hits you out of nowhere. Like stepping on a Lego in the dark. 
It forms around jet streams, those high-altitude airways where winds can go from mild breeze to hold onto your wigs in seconds. Is it dangerous? Well, modern planes are built to handle turbulence like champs. They probably won't break apart midair. Comforting, right? But if you're not strapped in, turbulence can turn your flight into an airborne WWE match. Fun fact, serious turbulence injuries on US airlines average around 12 per year. That's lower than your chances of getting attacked by a goose. How to survive turbulence? Easy. Keep your seatbelt on and don't play catch with your laptop. Pilots do their best to dodge it, but sometimes it's unavoidable. Plus, thanks to climate change, turbulence is getting worse. So buckle up, folks. The skies are getting rowdier. Explosive decompression. Let's talk about something that's both terrifying and weirdly fascinating. Explosive decompression. Imagine you're cruising at 35,000 feet, sipping your overpriced airport latte, and suddenly, bam, the cabin turns into a wind tunnel. Your ears feel like they're being used as bagpipes, and your lungs are screaming for help. Welcome to the wonderful world of explosive decompression, where the air inside you wants out, and it wants out fast. And speaking of bad days, let's talk about people actually being sucked out of planes. In 1973, a passenger got vacuumed straight through a window mid-flight, like some kind of horror movie directed by Mother Nature. Fast forward to 2018, and another passenger nearly suffered the same fate, only to be pulled back inside by fellow travelers. Unfortunately, she didn't make it. Moral of the story? Window seats come with risks airlines don't put in the brochure. Aircraft designers have wised up, reinforcing planes so they don't peel open like tin cans. Doors? Designed so they can't be opened mid-flight, no matter what Hollywood tells you. But cargo doors? Let's just say sometimes they forget to be closed properly and that's when things get spicy. So next time you're on a plane, buckle up, stay away from the windows, and hope your aircraft isn't in the mood for an impromptu sunroof. Fuel starvation. All right, let's discuss fuel starvation, because apparently running out of gas while flying is a real thing. And no, it's not always because the pilot just forgot to fuel up. Fuel starvation is what happens when there's gas on the plane, but for some reason it just doesn't reach the engine. This is different from fuel exhaustion, which is exactly what it sounds like, running out completely. No gas left, game over. Either way, the result is the same. The engine dies and suddenly you're piloting a very expensive glider. Now, why does fuel starvation happen? Well, the number one culprit, the pilot. Sometimes they mismanage the fuel systems, forget to switch tanks, or just get distracted. Imagine trying to fix a landing gear issue and whoops, forgot to check the fuel. Then there are mechanical failures, which while rare, do happen. Fuel lines, pumps, and filters can betray you. And sometimes the aircraft design itself is just unhelpful. A pilot unfamiliar with the quirks of a particular plane might not realize they need to switch to the backup tank until it's too late. If you think this is a rare issue, let's talk about actual crashes. In 2013, a police helicopter in Glasgow ran out of usable fuel mid-flight and crashed, killing 10 people. In 2016, a charter flight carrying an entire football team to Medellin didn't even have enough fuel to make the trip and still took off. Spoiler, it crashed. Then there's the Learjet in Denmark, where pilots ignored the low fuel warning and stalled the plane into a field. Moral of the story, check your fuel. Because if your plane turns into a falling rock, it's going to be a bad day. Pilot error. So flying is the modern miracle of human ingenuity, where metal birds defy gravity and carry us across the world. But here's the catch. When things go wrong at 35,000 feet, they go really wrong. And more often than not, the problem isn't the plane, it's the person flying it. That's right, pilot error is the number one cause of aviation accidents, and it's not just rookie mistakes. Even seasoned pilots can and do mess up, sometimes in ways that make you question how they ever got their wings in the first place. Imagine this, a pilot is taxiing to the wrong runway like he's lost in a mall parking lot. Another one forgets to check literally vital systems before takeoff. Some ignore the very strict no alcohol eight hours before flight rule because apparently flying a plane after a few drinks seems like a good idea. And let's not forget stress and fatigue. Flying a commercial jet requires razor sharp focus, but with grueling schedules and little time to rest, pilots sometimes operate on fumes, both figuratively and in worst cases, literally. That's when bad decisions snowball misreading instruments, losing altitude control, or pushing the plane beyond its limits. It's how a minor issue becomes a full-blown disaster. But here's the real kicker. When accidents happen, liability isn't always black and white. The airline, the flight crew, even the aircraft manufacturer can all be on the hook. That's where expert legal help comes in. Because when a mistake in the sky leads to tragedy on the ground, justice must be served. Structural Failure Let's get one thing straight. Planes are not supposed to fall apart in midair. That's the one thing we trust them not to do. But when structural failure happens at 30,000 feet, 
there's no convenient roadside breakdown. It's game over. Now, aircraft manufacturers know this, which is why they test plane materials like a scientist with trust issues. The metals, composites, and structures need to handle extreme pressure, turbulence, and whatever Mother Nature throws at them. But here's the problem. Some manufacturers cut corners, and when they do, a weak bolt or a hairline crack can turn into a disaster waiting to happen. Before a plane hits the skies, it goes through brutal testing. We're talking about stretching, pulling, pressurizing, and basically treating it like it owes someone money. If manufacturers do their job right, they catch weak materials before they ever see a runway. But if they don't, well, that's how we get headlines about aircraft panels flying off like loose shingles in a storm. When an aviation disaster happens, investigators dig deep. If they find a structural flaw, they don't just stop at the crash site. They go straight to the manufacturer. Because if one plane had a faulty part, chances are others do too. And no one wants to board a flight wondering if their plane is secretly held together with duct tape and wishful thinking. Bottom line, planes shouldn't crumble in midair. And when they do, someone has to answer for it. Cyber Attacks So, cyber attacks, an innovative way through which hackers can now hijack planes remotely. Yep, you heard that right. We're no longer just worried about mechanical failures or bad weather. Now some dude in his basement with a laptop could potentially take control of an entire passenger jet. There's growing evidence that modern aircraft are vulnerable to GPS jamming, data breaches, and even full-on system takeovers. And if you think this is some sci-fi fantasy, think again. Western officials are already worried that Russia is actively jamming GPS signals on commercial flights. Modern aircraft aren't just planes anymore. They're basically flying computers with autopilot systems, Wi-Fi, and software that communicates with ground control. And just like your home rotor, if these systems have weak security, hackers can slip in and take control. Security researchers have already demonstrated how planes can be hacked. A few years ago, a Spanish hacker named Hugo Tesso claimed he could hijack aircraft systems using just a smartphone app. And since then, things have only gotten worse. Cybersecurity in aviation isn't just an IT issue anymore. It's a national security crisis. If airlines don't step up their game, we could be looking at a future where planes are as easy to hack as a social media account. And let's be real, no one wants a mid-air 404 error, flight not found. 